All right, thanks for watching. And the awesome thing about the epsilon delta co definition of continuity is that you can easily generalize this for metric spaces. So let me remind you what epsilon delta says. So f, let's say from the real numbers to the real numbers, is continuous at x naught if for all epsilon there is a delta Delta such that, again, for our x, if the distance between x and x naught is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. And notice, this definition doesn't really use anything about r except the fact that we can take distances. And this is why we can easily generalize this to metric spaces, because suppose you have a function f from a metric space S to another metric space S prime. Now, each of them is equipped with their own distance. So let's say S is equipped with D and S prime is equipped with D prime. Then all you need to do is replace absolute value with the metric. So Suppose S D and S prime D prime are metric spaces. Then a function F, let's say from S to S prime, is continuous at X naught. If uh, for all epsilon, there is some delta such that for all x, if, so not absolute value of x minus x naught, but simply the distance between x and x naught, the distance between x and x naught, is less than delta, then, well, not absolute value of f of x and f of x naught, but the distance between f of x and f of x naught, and because we're in the output space, we have to use d prime, d prime of f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. How awesome is that? And this is why, uh, this is what makes a definition in math very good, if you can generalize this easily. So I know that uh, it looks very weird from, you know, at first sight, I was like, well, what is this epsilon? But uh, it's very, very powerful, and this is why it's powerful. All right, and here is an application, because the video can't just be three minutes long. Let me show the following. Um, consider the function f of xy being e to the x and then sine of x plus y. So it's a function with two components, here f1 and f2. And I want to show that this function is continuous if and only if each component is continuous. So here f1 itself is continuous, f2 is continuous, so in fact the whole function is continuous. So let's show that in general. So clay, uh, a function f, which components f1 up to fk, is continuous. And this function, by the way, so it goes from s with the metric d to rk. And rk will equip with the usual metric about, you know, the um, square root of the sum of squares of the components, and we'll write this just to emphasize as kind of a norm. So uh, double bar x minus y. And so this thing is continuous at x naught, if and only if, for all j, from 1 up to k, uh, the, com the component, so fj, from s to r, where here 
S we equip it with the distance d, and R with the absolute value, so xj minus yj, is continuous at x0. And by the way, the proof of this is very similar to the proof that a sequence converges in Rk if and only if each component converges in R. All right, so let's prove this. So first of all, let's prove that if f is continuous, is continuous at x0, and show that fj for every j is continuous at x0. So let's whip out our epsilons, so let epsilon be given. Then let's use that f is continuous at x0, so since f is continuous at x0, there is some universal delta that works, so there is, is delta positive such that for all x, if the distance between x and x0 is less than delta, then the distance in Rk of f of x minus f of x0 is less than epsilon. And I'd like to remind you this distance is just the square root of the sum of squares of each component. So fn x minus fn x naught squared. All right, now I'm claiming that that same delta works. So with the same delta, with the same delta, uh, if um, the distance between x and x naught is less than delta, then again, fj, the target is in R, so fj of x and fj of x naught are real numbers. But here's the thing, fj x minus fj x naught, the point is this is smaller than this distance, because you can just write it as the square root of fj x minus fj x naught squared, and this is definitely less than the sum of all those components. So less than the sum over n of fn x minus fn x naught squared. But we know this huge thing is already less than epsilon. So for sure, fn fj x minus fj x naught is less than epsilon. And this shows that fj is continuous as x0 because given epsilon, there is a delta such that if x and x0 are close, then fjx and fj of x0 are close as well. So hence, fj is continuous at x0. Ta-da! All right, and now let's just do the other case as well. So... Now suppose, suppose fj is continuous at x0 for all j, okay, and show that f is continuous at x0. Well, here's the thing. So for every epsilon, there's a delta for each fj. So in other words, if let epsilon be given, given, then we know that for each j, j, there is a delta, but the only thing is the delta depends on the component. So there is some delta j such that if the distance between x and x0 is less than delta j, then we have that fj of x minus fj of x0. Well, you could put less than epsilon, completely fine. But just to make it super clean at the end, that we really get epsilon at the end, let's put square root of k. Otherwise, you get something epsilon times square root of k, which is okay, but 
just to make it Rudin style if you want. Let's put epsilon over square root of k. And now, well, we want all those things to hold. So let delta be the smallest one of delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, up to delta k. So let delta be the minimum of delta 1, dot, 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 up to delta k. And since you're taking the minimum of a finite number of positive numbers, you do get something positive. Then, if the distance between x and x0 is less than delta, then all those things hold. And in particular, what do we get? We get that now the distance between f of x and f of x0, which is again the square root of the sum of squares, j from 1 to k, of fj of x minus fj minus yeah, fj of x0 squared. Now, this thing, we know that fgx minus fg of x0 is less than epsilon over square root of k, so this will be less than epsilon squared over k. And then what are you doing? You're adding k times this constant. Because you do epsilon squared over k plus epsilon squared over k, all that k times. So this is less than square root of k times epsilon squared over k. This cancels out and you're left with square root of epsilon squared and that is epsilon. And then we're done. Because given epsilon, you found a delta such that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. So therefore, f is continuous at x naught. F is continuous at x naught. Awesome. So you see, the whole point is, for metric spaces, it's basically the same as the real numbers. We didn't use anything really about d. You see, that just work for anything. So, uh, And also, by the way, there's an awesome video that shows that, well, under some conditions, every function is continuous or no functions are continuous. And I invite you to look at it. I think it's on the playlist somewhere. But uh, All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.